The drought of the last few years has forced a Conway County rancher to conserve water and take steps to protect his ultra black cattle. Last year during the severe drought dried up all of our pond water and all that. We had to look at alternatives in order to, to water our cattle and hauling water to cattle wasn't something that we had time to do. So I'd been reading about these water tanks and how they were installed and all that. So I went to our NRCS office and talked to them a little bit and they gave me some specs to kind of go by. And uh, so we put six of them in last summer whenever all of our water was drying up. And uh, the quality of water is so much better than pond water anyways. Uh, we actually got these hooked up to where I can run them on city water or I can run them on well water. They're on well water right now that we had established with our poultry farm. Uh, <clears throat> but cattle will actually pass up a creek or a pond to come to these to drink out of. I uh, wish we'd have known about them 30 years ago and we would have never built a pond to be honest with you. That's how much fresher they keep the water and the cattle, uh, they prefer it. Philip and Beth DeSalvo, their children Ben and Isabella, and Philip's dad Tony, are Arkansas's reigning farm family of the year and own Big D Ranch in Conway County. They've developed the largest herd of registered ultra black cattle in Arkansas. Ultra black are Angus Brangus crosses that Phillips says are more docile and able to withstand the heat of an Arkansas summer better than cattle which are bred for more northern climates. The drought led Philip and Tony to develop the new watering system which currently features six tire tanks scattered over 250 acres, with plans to install six more over the next year. Last year knocked us back on a rocking chair just like everybody else did. Uh, but yeah, like you just said, we're a whole lot more prepared. Uh, I don't want to say bring it on because I don't want to see what could get worse, but <laughs> uh, we're a whole lot more prepared for drought situations today than we, than we were a year ago or two years ago for sure. Uh, Though he's had a good first cutting of Bermuda hay this year, Philip is supplementing his grazing by feeding his cattle a wheat ryegrass silage mix, which is added insurance against the time when his hay and pasture may be limited again. Yeah, I had to buy a little hay last year, but with all the abundance of silage that we did put up, we did not have to sell a cow last year. We did a little culling, but we did not have to because we was out of pasture or out of food source or something like that. Uh, and today, <clears throat> right now we're sitting on, I've got 3,500 tons of silage put up and we got 1,600 bales of hay because I did all that in my first cutting. And people are saying, well, are you gonna need your second? Are you gonna need your third? <clears throat> it's a lot cheaper for those fellas to get out there and graze it than it is for me to bale it. Philip and Tony are running their herd on land their ancestors established in 1880. The family has weathered several storms including a tornado in 2008 and losing their poultry contract that same year. Like other ranchers, Philip has had to adapt in the face of challenges like these. He feels the weight of responsibility to keep the 133-year-old family farm going and one day hopefully pass it down to the next generation. <laughs>